Look, Bumble knows you're exhausted by dating. All the, must not take yourself too seriously, and 6-1 since that matters, and what do I even say other than, hey? <sighs> well, that's why they're introducing an all-new Bumble, with exciting features to make compatibility easier, starting the chat better, and dating safer. They've changed, so you don't have to. Download the new Bumble now. Families have a lot going on. Let Ollie help manage the mental load with new cognitive health supplements for everyone four and up, like delicious Lolly Focus Pops or Lolly Mellow Pops for kids. And for parents, try three new Brainy Chews to help you focus, chill out, or get energized. Find these cognitive health buddies for the whole fam at ollie.com. That's O L L Y.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 2189. Moms, what could you accept to live a happier life? By Erica Lane of ericalane.co. Hello, everybody. I'm Greg Audino, your host. And this is another parenting episode of ORD. So if you're new here, Thursdays and Fridays are all about parenting content specifically, so sharing and commenting on articles that cover the parenting journey and how to master it. Today's post goes a long way towards mental health for parents, and for anyone really. So with that, let's jump right in and start optimizing your life. Moms, what could you accept to live a happier life? By Erica Lane of ericalane.co. I climbed into our minivan, buckled my seatbelt, put my hands on the wheel, and turned at the waist to get a glimpse of each of my children. Sandals on one, basketball shorts and short sleeves on another, a summer sundress on the last. It was chilly and raining out. Lightly, but still, there was literal water dripping from the sky, and my children were dressed for the 4th of July. Tolerating versus accepting. Tolerating stinks. Tolerating wears on our nerves. It breaks us down over time. Tolerating the irritants around us does not alleviate them. If anything, it gives them more power, because each time we pass the light left on, or the smudgy handprints on the wall, the frustration builds up inside of us. But when you share a house with children, and pets, and a spouse, It feels like tolerating is part of the job description. It's not even down low on the list. It's like number two, right there under be the person who finds everything. But what about accepting some of the irritants you can never resolve? How would that change your every day? Could it lighten the stress and agitation you're carrying in your shoulders? Could it reduce the number of times per day you snap at the people you gave life to? What science says. In a study of the brains of long-term couples, scientists found that their happiest participants showed reduced activity in a region of the cerebral cortex that is associated with the tendency to focus on the negative rather than the positive. By opting not to dwell on the negative, these people had cultivated contentment in their relationships. Scientists call this phenomenon positive illusions. Helen Fisher is quoted as saying, We humans are able to convince ourselves that the real is the ideal. End quote. The real is the ideal. I love that phrase. At my house, the real is that my boys won't wear anything but basketball shorts and my daughter detests socks. The real is that they complain often and it wears on me. The real is the nonstop struggle to stay on top of the mess in my kids' rooms and to not get agitated when they'll only eat the bread at dinner, again. But maybe, with enough purpose and practice on my part, the real could move a little bit more toward ideal. Five irritants to let go of. Number one, clothing preferences. Every time I see a well-dressed baby, I want to commiserate with the baby's mama about how nice it is when kids let you dress them, before they decide that matching and skinny pants are for the birds. Could you learn to accept the inside-out t-shirts and disdain for jeans, instead of barely tolerating them? Number two, weather-appropriate attire. Granted, this varies based on where you live. I'm in Northern California, but most of our children's winter apparel choices won't kill them. 
I suggest setting up a rule or two that the kids can live with and then letting the rest go. For instance, you must wear a jacket when you go outside, but whatever is under it is up to you. I think most parents would agree that the more we nag, the more our kids push back. Maybe if we drop it for a while, they'll come to a decision on their own that it's more comfortable to dress for the weather. I'll try it and let you know. Number three, complaining. Recently, for my birthday, I told our kids that the only thing I wanted was a day without complaining. They tried. Really, they did. But we couldn't even make it one day without complaining. Not even close. I want to help my children learn to see the positive around them. But I also know that some knee-jerk complaining is normal in their development. Number four, messy bedrooms. I once heard a mom with grown children say one thing she wished she'd done differently was not worry about the state of her kids' rooms. It seemed so inconsequential when I first heard it. I thought, if that's the only thing you'd change about your motherhood experience, I think you did pretty darn well. Now that my children are a bit older, I can see what she means. It is so tempting to constantly lean on my kids about their rooms. I want them to grow up to be respectful roommates and spouses but I also want to get through raising them with my sanity intact. It's a give and take. And number five, picky eating. Comedian and dad of five, Jim Gaffigan, says giving a four-year-old a taco is like throwing a taco on the floor. (laughs) It's aggravating to continually make food your children won't eat, with their preferences changing with the wind. But again, fighting for control over the little people we can't entirely control is an uphill battle. I think only ninja-level mothers have accepted all five of these at once, but if you notice one or two on this list that put continual strain on your happiness, maybe you'll consider sliding away from tolerating and moving toward accepting, eventually merging some of the real with the ideal in your life. You just listened to the post titled, Moms, What Could You Accept? To Live a Happier Life, by Erica Lane of ericalane.co, and I'll be back with my comments in just a sec. At Evernorth Health Services, we believe costs shouldn't get in the way of life-changing care, and we're doing everything in our power to make it possible. Behavioral health solutions that also keep your projections at their best? It's possible. Pharmacy benefits that benefit your bottom line? It's possible. Complex specialty care that cares about your ROI? It's possible because we're already doing it, all while saving businesses billions. That's wonder made possible. Learn more at evernorth.com slash wonder. And thanks a lot to Erica for this post, which for me brought me back to a very simple reminder that can be so easy to lose track of as time goes on and those irritations pile up. And that is the fact that each and every one of your irritants is an opportunity. Looking at them this way is what really helps us to gain power over them. They do pose opportunities for us to stay present, to form boundaries, to learn more about why we're set off more by some things than others, to look for solutions, to reframe, to forgive ourselves, to mind that space between feeling and action. You know, the list goes on. So today, I encourage you to think about something that regularly irritates you and think about how approaching it differently could make you a better version of yourself. Maybe one of the opportunities I listed makes sense to you, or maybe it's a different one. But surely, if you do think critically about who you want to be in this life and what you value, you will be able to come up with a way that changing your approach to a particularly frustrating part of your life right now can help you to get there. I wish you luck with that, everyone. It's time to get going for now, but I thank you so much for coming today and staying until the end. I hope you enjoyed this post and that it leaves you with some lessons you can apply in your own life. And aside from that, I wish you a great rest of your day, and do be sure to come back and join us again tomorrow for more. That's where your optimal life awaits.